Hey there! Today we are going to look at another radio from my collection, a military radio. This is, once again, from my Interbellum Radio Collection. And I used to actually collect all sorts of military radios. Military radios, military radars, sonars, test equipment, any era, didn't make a difference. Well, that was 35 years ago. When, yeah, new collector, dumb kid, collect it all. It was also extremely cheap back then because military radio collecting wasn't really quite a thing yet. Well, you know what happens if you try and collect it all. You can't. You run out of room. So things got pared down. Every couple of years I've decided, you know what, I'm not going to collect this type of radio anymore, this era of radio anymore. This branch of right, whatever. And uh, my collection shrank and shrank. And about 10 years ago, I've pretty much settled on the radios of the Interbellum. Now, the Interbellum is the uh, space between the wars. The Great War, a.k.a. World War I, and World War II. Basically the 20s and 30s. I might dabble in World War I radios a little bit, but uh, not so much the 20s and 30s stuff. That's where it's at as far as I'm concerned. And this is one of them. This is a BC-176A radio transmitter. Now, some of you may sort of recognize this from a previous video I did for a BC-175, the radio receiver, BC-175. And it very much looks like this, the same styling. Well, that's because it was indeed sort of a mate to this. And I'll say sort of because this is an A model. It's slightly different. I don't actually have a BC-176. I'd like to get one, but I've never actually seen one. So I'm on the hunt for an original 1933 BC-176. This is 1937 or so. And, uh, well, it goes with a set called SCR-209. SCR being Set Complete Radio, or Signal Core Radio, depending on which reference you look up. And uh, SCR-209 was from, well, 1937 or so, and uh, was a little bit of a stopgap radio. Now, originally, the BC-175-176, like this, was part of a, a pair of sets called SCR 189 and 190. Now, the, the they were essentially made for tanks, those little Renault FT-17 tanks. Uh, cute little things, aren't they? And uh, there were probably several hundred of those made, and some, made, uh, some got installed in various scout cars and things like that. Vehicle radio. Well, towards the, uh, towards the end of the 30s, and 1937 like this, BC-175 receiver was kind of getting along in the tooth. The frequency range it worked at was kind of limiting, frankly, because, well, the, the military started using more and more different frequency bands. So uh, they decided, the, the military decided they needed a new set. Now, in the works was something called uh, SCR-245, and uh, some hams might realize or recognize that as the transmitter is, is the common BC-223, kind of a neat little set that soldiered on into World War II, a nice set. Now, I don't know what happened, but it seems like that may have been delayed because just before that, they came out with a limited standard, SCR-209. Limited standard meaning, well, you can use it, but don't put it in frontline service, sort of. And what they did was they took an existing transmitter design, the BC-176. They upgraded just a little bit, the A, and they matched it with this fancy new receiver called the BC-312. Now... Most military radio hams will know what a BC-312 is. A very, very common World War II receiver made for vehicles and uh, uh, ground sets. Heavy black box. They made a gazillion of the things. Very good receiver. 
Well, most, most people don't realize that that receiver actually dates back to 1937. And uh, all of them you see, all of them you see are going to be World War II ones, except I once did see a, uh, an actual 1937 BC-312. It was on eBay, didn't get it, went for pretty good money. Um, I'd like to find a, a straight BC-312. Not an A, nothing like that, just BC-312. Because that is what mates with this, the BC-176A. The uh, result being SCR-209 and was fitted to scout cars and other vehicles like that. I don't think SCR-209s were put into tanks. So, here we go. The BC-176 is very similar to the BC-175 in styling. You can see, once again, it is a uh, pretty shallow radio. There's, there's, this is meant to go against a wall or bulkhead. And it uses the same mounting scheme, these strange ears, which went into rubber pads. And those rubber pads kind of fit over like this. And those rubber pads then fit into a big frame. Uh, I've never seen one of the frames. Presumably, they, they got scrapped with the uh, vehicles. Now, a uh, very similar styling. You have the same type of knobs as the BC-175. You've got the same protection shields. Kind of interesting. The signal core went through a little bit of a period when they put these, these shields on, around knobs. I don't know. Maybe people were knocking stuff. Let's take a look inside. You open it the same way. And it should hinge down. Bring it up a little bit there. Not much to see up top. Nice ceramic sockets for the three tubes and two VT25s. Eh, pretty common. And then a VT50. VT50 is the modulator. Uh, so yes, we have uh, the MO, the master oscillator. Got the modulator in the middle. And then the power amp at the end. So yes, the, the VT25s are doing all the HF work and the modulators, well, modulating. And yes, a VT50 is indeed a Type 50 tube. 50s were actually used in military gear. Now, uh, I'd like to find a VT50, but, well, it's expensive. VT, 50s in general are expensive. I've never actually laid my hands on an honest-to-goodness VT50. I've got 50s, but not a VT50. You can see they, they give you a little bit of a window to look at your tubes. You can see the construction. Let's turn this around. Very much like, very much like the uh, BC-175. Very similar type of construction. Very overbuilt. In the 30s, they were uh, extremely, uh, considering they were broke, the, the uh, signal core made their things extremely overbuilt. Let me see if I can show you a uh, large, large, large diameter, uh, large gauge wire, a nice relay. Things are shielded, things are nicely uh, tied up there. Some of those fancy new connectors. Yes, that, that, that is, I think, one of the things they changed is, is, is the style of connectors. But, you know, we have some uh, kind of throwbacks. We have these old style uh, mica caps here. But then we got the uh, fairly new style. Uh, variable capacitors. Once again, uh, old style plus new style. Now we can look at the schematic. Let me just get this out of the way. Analyze the schematic because they put the schematic in the case. Now the one weird thing about this schematic is they drew it backwards. <laughs> Normally on transmitters the antenna 
and the, the power amp and all that business is on this side of the drawing and the oscillator is on this side of the drawing. They reversed it for some reason. We've got the uh, the oscillator right over here. There's the modulator with the VT50 and the PA and the ant antenna and ground. Why they drew it that way, I don't know. But uh, pretty pretty standard looking uh, looking uh, circuit there. A nice drawing on the switch there. But uh, yes, you can see that yes, this this will do voice as well as CW because well when you originally when you're driving around a tank or bouncing around in your scout car, it's a lot easier to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in fact, trying to send Morse code on a, uh, on a on a scout car that's going down an extremely bumpy gravel road may not be too much fun. So you can see uh, some cooling down at the base here because I'm sure this gets pretty toasty with that VT50 in there. So we'll put this back. I should also mention that the SCR209 to get that uh, to get this transmitter okay, this is going to be probably difficult to get back in so excuse me while I try and get this thing back in. There we go. Did use a control box that linked the two together. And that's another piece that I'm looking for. It was a long skinny thing in the style of this with the, the goofy knobs. That's what linked this to the BC312 receiver. So there you have it. Is this a useful transmitter? No. <laughs> Doesn't cover a hand band, and look at how small that that uh, frequency range is: twenty two hundred to twenty six hundred megahertz or kilohertz. That's it. You didn't get much more. Um, the BC three twelve, of course, was was much much more general coverage. So, uh, how long did these things last in service? Probably not long. They they probably didn't even get into World War Two. Maybe they were used for some training stuff stateside. That's what a lot of this 1930s gear that was still kicking around in 1940, 1941, that's where a lot of it ended up. Didn't go overseas, didn't go actually into battle, but it, it was used here for training. So, will this guy ever work? No, it's, it's, there's, there's no real need to, to get it up and running simply because you can't use it. You simply can't use it. But it's a neat thing. I'd like to, at some point, maybe touch up the paint a little bit. There's a few flaws in the paint, just from kicking around. That happens with these old sets. You know, these things were probably surplused out right after World War II. Some of this stuff was even surplused out before World War II. And, uh, hey, you know, it's been kicking around... I forget where I think I traded this for some Western Electric gear. This and a BC-175 for uh, a ratty old Western Electric amplifier that I had that was half parted out. It was a good deal. I can't complain because it's good stuff for good stuff as far as I'm concerned. So there you have it. The uh, BC-176A. Take a look at the tag. And uh, that's what it's all about. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be uh, making more for my uh, military radio collection. I actually have a kind of a bigger video coming up concerning uh, another interesting Navy set, a uh, Marine Corps set, actually, from the, uh, from the late 20s. And uh, that'll come out eventually. All right, well, if you like the video, leave a like, maybe subscribe. You should go back and watch some of the past videos, especially the one about the BC-175 receiver, so you can compare and contrast that and this. Uh, share this around and leave a comment. If you have a question about this thing, I can uh, look into it further. 
Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye now.